The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and SCC TV are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as advocates to the White Bear Area and its business community. Now, here's the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we interview community leaders and local business owners so you can be informed about the developments in our community. I'm pleased to welcome Andrea Kish Bailey, the Executive Director of the White Bear Lake Food Shelf. Thank you for coming to Your Business Matters. Thank you for having me. Okay. The first question I want to ask you is, how did you become involved uh, with the food shelf originally? And, a wonderful question. And what led to your current position? Yeah, so I have been working in nonprofit for about 20 years. Uh, my parents were Salvation Army officers, so I was raised in kind of the mindset of service to others. Mm -hmm. um, I went to school at St. Thomas and learned more about justice and advocacy for folks who were uh -huh. struggling. And that led me kind of on my journey. I started as a volunteer coordinator with the Salvation Army and took different roles um, uh -huh. moving up. I was with Loaves and Fishes for a few years, store to door, and then I came to the White Bear Food Shelf about, okay. about four years ago. Okay, so you've been there, and then how long have you been the, uh, have you been the executive director then since you started there? Correct, yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Um, where is the food shelf uh, actually located? Yeah, so we're located in White Bear Lake on Whitaker Street, 1884 Whitaker Street. Uh -huh. And you could say we're um, kind of down the street from Water Gremlin in between 61 and Otter Lake Road. Okay, okay, so you just go down. You kind of run somewhat per perpendicular to the Highway 61 there. You got it, yep. Okay, all yeah. right, so that's, that's good to know. Um, approximately how many people uh, does the White Bear Area Food Shelf serve? And let's just start out with your uh, one location that you've got down on Whitaker Street. Sure. So um, we have uh, many different programs. Right. On any given month, a total of over a thousand families visit the food a shelf. A thousand? Yeah. And so um, in terms of our monthly market, which right. I think you're speaking about, we serve about 500 families. About 500. So that means that you got 50% almost. Correct. That are served outside of your one location that you've got in, uh, in, in White Bear. Correct. Okay, and I want to go, re, uh, go back again to the one you've got in White Bear. What do you, is it open every day? Yeah, so we're open six days a week. Uh -huh. um, we do our monthly market Monday through Friday. A Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning, we're open for shopping, and then Tuesday and Thursday evening. Okay. And then we're also open on Saturday, where we have a bonus market. And this is where we have about four to 5,000 pounds of food rescue, which is food had you purchased would be in your refrigerator waiting for you to eat it, uh -huh. but a grocery store can no longer sell it. So, you know, you know what it sounds like to me? It's really interesting. It sounds like uh, you mentioned this food that, that gets from the grocery stores, mm -hmm. and we'll go into that a little bit later in the interview. But it seems like uh, when, you, when you look at this food, then if it didn't come to the food shelf, would it just be thrown away? It, it would be, and uh -huh. it's, it's perfectly good food. So okay. we have about 5,000 pounds of food on Saturday, and about 120 families come for that food. So they come to use this food, which otherwise would just be discarded. Yeah, and it's like deli items, fresh fruits. Uh huh. Um, sometimes there's meat, sometimes there's dry good. We sure. call it bonus because you uh -huh. never kind of know what you're going to get. Wow. Now, you mentioned that you serve approximately maybe a little bit more than 500 people that come into your uh, store. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, but that's half the people. Yeah. So go into uh, some of the other uh, outreach programs, yeah. maybe you would call them, that are offered by the Food Shelf. Yeah, so we do... Um what's called a mobile market, where we kind of bring the food shelf into senior buildings throughout the community. Okay. And we set up a market within the senior building, and the seniors come and shop and, once and a month. And what are some of the buildings that you uh, do the outreach to the seniors in? Where yeah. were they located? So we're at Washington Square, Pioneer Manor, and Willowwood. Mm -hmm. And then we also do a mobile market every month at Century College. 
which is kind of the same Century setup. College, and you go there to serve students, huh? Correct, yep. Wow. Yep, and so Century College um, has uh, multiple generations within right. their students. Yes. There's a lot of families, a lot of um, single parents as well. So every month we serve about 80 families there. 80 families at Century College. You, know, you wouldn't think of a uh, college as being a centerpiece for uh, the food shelf. Yeah. So that's really, really interesting yeah. that you uh, bring that up. And they have a wonderful community resource program mm -hmm. right there yeah. on the college, too. So we partner with them. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Now, have you seen an uptick in the number of people that are being served by the food shelf? And I know that you, you mentioned the, uh, uh, all of the venues that you've got, but from year to year, do you see more or less people that are being, uh, that utilize your services? We see more people every year. I think we're up about 20% this in 2018 over 2017. 20%? Yep. Because you, you know, you, you read all the time or hear about how we have a booming job market. Mm -hmm. And so the perception by a lot of people is probably, well, this means that people are doing pretty well. Mm -hmm better than they maybe were back in the early part of the 2000s. Mm -hmm. So how would you explain the fact that right now you see about a 20% increase mm -hmm. in the number of people that are using the food shop over a period of one year? Yeah. So the jobs these days in the booming job market are very different from the jobs just 20 years ago. Uh -huh. um, in order to get health benefits, you have to work a full-time job. So some of right. the hospitality jobs are only hiring people at three-quarters time right. so that they don't have to pay benefits. So now you're working maybe two part-time jobs and still having to pay for benefits. So and I, health insurance is not cheap. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I think it can be a little misleading to talk about a booming job market and that the jobs uh -huh. are different yeah. than they were um, even 20 years ago. So then you, you know you always think of um, I mean the perception that a lot of people have of white bears were kind of like the Edina of the Northeast you know <laughs> people envision white bears a group of people that live around the lake and mm -hmm. maybe are members of the yacht club or something right. and I think what you're saying is that because you probably serve the white bear area community essentially right. is that there's another white bear and so, I mean, yeah. when, when you mention that there's a 20% increase over a period of one year, that means that maybe there are, that there are people that aren't as noticed mm -hmm. as others in our community. Definitely. So we serve the White Bear School District. Um, so that encompasses... Oh, you do? We do, yep. Uh -huh. So we serve all the way from Badness Heights through Hugo. Yep. Um, and... White Bear is growing tremendously. I mean, the, you're just looking at the school district in itself, yeah. it's, it's constantly growing, which means more people are yeah. moving into the area. So, and then you mentioned, uh, I'm uh, again digressing a little bit, you mm -hmm. mentioned uh, as one of the, when we talked about outreaches, you just mentioned the White Bear School District. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit further detail about what are some of the things that you do at the school district? Yeah, thank you. Um, so we do a program called Kid Packs, which uh -huh. is a bag of food for kids to have over the weekends when they don't have access to school lunches. On average, the school district, 30% um, of students are eligible for free or reduced 30 lunches. 30% in yes. the White Bear School District. Yes, across system. the district. Yep. Yeah. Some of the schools, some of the elementary schools are as high as 50 to 70% eligible. 50 to 70% that of, of, of students that need... Uh, reduced re reduced lunches or, or food right. service. Yeah. So every week we provide a bag of food to 400 students within the White yep. Bear School District to have over the yeah. weekend. And additionally, we have partnered with the middle schools and the two high school campuses to okay. have a food pantry on campus uh -huh. for older kids who also might need yep. some extra food. Is there ever some sort of a uh, hesitation among some of the students to want to take free food. Yeah, so one of the reasons we went from the Kid Pack program at the middle and the secondary uh -huh. schools was because of that, that reason. It was oh, harder okay. for the 
teachers to kind of hide that they were getting the food. And yep. so by establishing a food pantry within the site, yeah. students can come to the office whenever it works for their schedule mm -hmm. and where they feel more comfortable. So uh, how many students basically do you serve uh, through food packs and things like that? So we is do, that part of that 500 or is this an addition? That's an addition. We don't consider that in our numbers. We do 400 kid packs every single week. And then over the course of the school year, we have served about mm -hmm. five, there, we've had about 500 visits to the pantries. Okay. So you have expanded your uh, services quite a bit then. We have. Yeah. Now, when you talk about, uh, you do a lot in the area mm -hmm. and this all takes money. Mm -hmm. How do you sustain your operation? Yes, I will say that we have a very, very generous community that supports the food shelf. Uh, the building that we are in is owned by White Bear yes. Lake, city of White Bear Lake. So they charge us $1 in rent a year, which helps tremendously. And then um, the community supports us through individual donations, which is our largest source of uh -huh. revenue. Uh, we have foundations that help us, the churches help us, and then we have a few grants that we're able sure, to apply sure. for. So you do, so it's a multiple thing, but you do rely a lot on uh, community donations. Yeah. Huge, hugely. What, what, what percent would you say outside of maybe you get some foundation grants mm -hmm. that come at a fairly regular basis? Correct. Uh, what percent of your budget then do you think you rely on the generosity of the uh, community? Definitely. So about 40% of our financial donations come from individuals like yourself. Yeah. About 10% like come, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about 10% come from churches and about 15% from um, businesses. And then the oh, rest okay. would be foundations or grants. Yeah. Yep. So So it's you, really a generous community. Yeah. Thank you for telling me that. I mm -hmm. appreciate it. You know, one thing uh, again digressing a little bit from our uh, from our discussion. This is based on outreach again. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned a program that was actually organized by a group of, I don't know if they were like middle school students, oh, were they? Yeah, elementary. Elementary school students. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so the Birch Lake Student Council, I think it was fourth and fifth graders, uh -huh. um, decided they wanted to do something to help um, students who were struggling over the weekends without access to um, the student meals. And uh -huh. so they went to the school board and to the principal's meeting and talked to get the school district excited with them to do a kid pack drive. And they did a kid pack drive a couple weekends ago at six different grocery stores in the area. Festival Foods, uh -huh. Kowalski's, Cub Foods, um, White Bear Township Cub Foods, and Lunds and Byerly's. Uh -huh. And they hosted a drive and they collected almost 5,000 pounds of food. Wow. Yeah. And then that was then distributed to uh, students? So that will go through our Kid Pack program for the rest of the oh, school wow. year. Oh, wow. That yeah. is really an incredible story of, of the organizing skills of Fourth grade and fifth school graders. students. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yep. yep. Uh, and that kind of leads me to the uh, next question that I have is um, the food mm -hmm. that gets, uh, you know, I, I would imagine that it's easier, you know, to get canned food. I mean, it lasts a long time and it's easy to give canned food, but you also have perishable items. We do, actually yeah. we have mostly perishable items. Yes. Um, we know that it's the most expensive thing on your grocery list is your fresh fruits and vegetables and your meats. And you have to have that, And obviously. you have to have yeah. that in order to be so healthy. So how do you get your, um, your perishable food items and how, I mean, do they all come exclusively from grocery stores or what? Yeah, so um, a lot of it comes, like we said, through food rescue. And yep. then we also purchase food. Um, we purchase from local food banks like the Food Group or Second Harvest. The food banks kind of serve as our wholesale house, yeah. which we'll purchase directly from them. So you have to them. purchase it from them. They just don't give it to you. That is correct. Yep, we have to purchase it from uh -huh. them. It is at a lower price. So you've maybe heard that $1 sure. donated to the food shelf can purchase $8 worth of food. Right. And it's because of those relationships with okay. the food banks. Now, uh, when you talk about the other venues, uh, the local grocery stores, do they give, do you have to purchase it from them or do they typically give you a, uh, just give you food? 
So they give us food rescue um, for free uh -huh. without having to purchase it. Um, we do have a program with Festival in White Bear Lake called Fresh Bucks. It's okay. set up through Washington County where you can make a donation at the register to the food shelf and then that money we're able to use to purchase fresh fruits and vegetables for the okay. food shelf. And that would be from Festival? Correct, yep. Okay, do you also get food donated from Cub then? And I think you also mentioned uh, the new Lunds Byerly store. Yeah, so um, Cub does, you've probably seen them, these brown bags that they put out that people can buy and then sure. the food shelf comes and picks those up. Uh -huh. So that would be how we would get food. Lunds and Byerly's um, has been a wonderful addition to our food rescue, uh -huh. um, providing beautiful steaks and hamburgers and things that we can give out in our monthly oh, wow. market. So that's something nice that people yeah. can give out. So. And then Kowalski's has been yeah. our, our longest partner in food rescue yeah, yeah, and additionally cool. they have if you've been to Kowalski's which I'm sure you have mm -hmm. they have a place where you can put receipts yes and so the food shelf is on there and then every quarter the receipts somehow become money and they give us a check. Oh that's wonderful. Yeah it's yeah. wonderful. One thing that I've noticed with the food shelf is that um, out of the 500 plus people that you serve at your uh, location, there seems to be a number of senior citizen clients mm -hmm. that come there. Definitely. The first question I wanted to ask you is, have you seen an increase in the number of older people that come to use the food shelf? Yeah, we continue to see an increase in seniors utilizing the food shelf year after year. Um, many seniors are living on a fixed income. Yes. Many seniors aren't able to retire at all because they have to um, yes. fend for themselves. So we're definitely seeing an increase in that. That's kind of been the push for these mobile markets as well as as seniors age their physical mobility decreases and uh -huh. so by allowing us to bring food to them it makes it easier for them yep. to access the healthy food. Yeah. It's also an opportunity um, to kind of fight against isolation so the seniors can come down and shop yes. together and, and chat with their neighbors. Uh -huh. I don't think I told you about our free farmers markets no, which we no, do in the summer. Please do, yes. So in the summer at Redeemer Lutheran and at Willow Elementary School we do what we call free farmers markets and this is beautiful produce from local farms that just ha it's too much, it's like overage, so they can't use it, but it's beautiful. And so uh, we offer these free farmers markets that people can come, up to 300 families will come to one market, and a large percentage is seniors. And again, it provides an opportunity for seniors. Do, do people pay for that, or do they get it? Or they how, get it for that? free, yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a wonderful program, and that's oh, a program. It really, uh, it, that, that's uh, really innovative. Yeah. 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 So and then they get and then they can go to these uh, and and you do this starting in what month then? It'll start towards the end of June. So okay. our website will have more information as we sure, move forward. Sure. And then um, what it does is it creates kind of a safe place to see the food shelf in action. Yeah. And a lot of times it will build that trust and make people feel more comfortable coming uh -huh, uh -huh. to our regular market. So we, you do all these things, and obviously you need to have paid staff to operate Correct. to do the essential operation of the uh, food shelf. Uh, do, you, do you need volunteers? Mm -hmm. We always need volunteers. Uh -huh. Last year we had over 500 individuals volunteer at the food shelf in one of, oh, one of our programs. That's incredible. It is. What are some things that people might be able to do if they were to uh, volunteer to help with the food shelf? Sure, so folks can help um, in the market, help people shop the market. They can help sort food and stock the market. Uh -huh. um, we use volunteers at our mobile markets and at our free yes. farmers markets. We also have a lovely garden at the food uh -huh. shelf, and so volunteers help with that as well. Sure. And then we need people to help pick up food rescue from the uh -huh. various grocery stores. And we have a large truck that volunteers can drive or they can use their own yep. vehicles. Could a, could a business, for example, uh, when you have uh, openings at your grocery store, I mm -hmm. guess I'll call it, or yeah, store, market, yeah. could they ever use that as a way to build 
maybe cohesiveness with their employees yeah. by coming down and doing a uh, session yeah. on some day uh, with the food shelf? Yeah, we have a lot of different team building opportunities um, where you can pack kid packs as a group. H.B. Fuller does that every year for us. Uh -huh. um, we also have a, a program around Thanksgiving called Give a Gobble, which is our Thanksgiving distribution. Uh -huh. And we have businesses that sponsor that, and part of their sponsorship includes a two-hour shift for them to take in the market. Oh, it's, that's really a, an interesting concept. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the best part is that that's what the businesses yeah. like the most. So they're actually paying us money sure. to come and volunteer. Okay. Yeah. So if somebody is interested in finding out more about the food shelf for maybe volunteering, maybe donating money, mm -hmm. how can they get a hold of uh, your operation yeah. and you? So the best way is to go on our website, which is www.whitebearfoodshelf.org. Okay. Um, you can also check us out on Facebook, White uh -huh. Bear Food Shelf, and then you could call us at 651-407-5310. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Before we leave, I have a quick announcement about an important chamber community happening that's taking place on April 18th. The White Bear Area Chamber will host a ribbon cutting and an after hours business connection at Element Indoor Golf, located at 4255 White Bear Parkway. This event will give you an opportunity to connect with other business people and work on your important golf swing. There is no charge to attend people interested in more information about this exciting event, contact the Chamber office at our website, www.whitebearchamber.com. I'm Tom Snell. Thank you for watching Your Business Matters. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.